Welcome to part two of solving a first order homogeneous differential equation written in differential form. A first order DE written in differential form as we see here is homogeneous if function M and N are homogeneous functions of the same degree, which means M of TX comma TY must equal T raised to some power times the original function and N of TX comma TY must also be equal to t raised to the same power times the original function n. So these two exponents here must be the same in order for m and n to be homogeneous functions of the same degree and therefore we'd have a homogeneous differential equation. So once we know it's homogeneous, we can solve the differential equation by performing a substitution and we have two choices. We can let y equal x times v and therefore differential y is equal to x dv plus v dx using implicit differentiation and the product rule. Or we could also let x equal y times v and therefore dx is equal to y dv plus v dy. To decide which substitution to do, it's based upon whether function m or function n is simpler. If m is the simpler function, we want to perform a substitution for dx and therefore we'll use a substitution x equals y times v. If function n is simpler, we want to perform a substitution for dy and therefore we'll use a substitution y equals x times v. Once we perform these substitutions, we can solve the resulting DE using separation of variables and then from there we can solve the original DE in terms of x and y. Let's take a look at our second example. So we first want to put the given differential equation in the correct form or this form here and then we'll test to make sure that function m and n are homogeneous functions of the same degree. So if we subtract this quantity from both sides of the equation, we would have y dx minus two times the quantity x plus y dy equals zero. So from here, notice that function m of x comma y is just equal to y and function n of x comma y is equal to negative two times the quantity x plus y. And now we'll check to make sure these are homogeneous of the same degree, so we'll find m of tx comma ty and n of tx comma ty. So for function m, we substitute ty for y, so we have t times y, and since y is the original function, we can write this as t times m of x comma y. So this is a degree one homogeneous function. And then for n, we would have negative two times tx plus ty. We can factor out the t, so we can write this as t times negative two times the quantity x plus y. Notice inside the brackets we do have function n, so we can write this as t to the first times n of x comma y. This is also a degree one homogeneous function and therefore our differential equation here is homogeneous, which means we can solve it using substitution and then separation of variables. But if we take a look at this differential equation, notice how function m, this function here, is now simpler, which means we want to perform a substitution for dx, and therefore now we're going to use a substitution x equals y times v, and dx equals y times dv plus v times dy. Let's do this on the next slide. So again from here we're letting x equal y times v, and therefore dx equals y times dv plus v times dy. So we'll have y times dx, which is all of this. And we'll have minus two times x is y times v plus y times dy. Now let's go ahead and distribute and simplify. We have y squared dv plus yv dy. Here we'll have minus two yv dy minus two y dy. Notice how every term contains a factor of y. Notice how every term contains a factor of y. 
let's go ahead and divide that out. So we're going to divide both sides by y. So we'll have y dv plus v dy minus two v dy minus two dy equals zero. Now let's go ahead and combine these two terms. So we have y dv, this will be minus v dy minus two dy equals zero. Now let's go ahead and move the two dy terms to the right. So we have y dv equals v dy plus two dy. And we'll go ahead and factor out the dy. So we have y dv equals the quantity v plus two times dy. Let's go ahead and take this onto the next slide. Now we want the y terms on the right and the v terms on the left. So what we'll do now is multiply both sides by one over y as well as one over the quantity v plus two. Notice on the left side, the y terms simplify out. So we have one over the quantity v plus two times dv equals, here the v plus two over v plus two simplifies the one, so we have one over y dy. Now we'll go ahead and integrate both sides of the equation. So we'll have natural log absolute value of v plus two. We would have a constant of integration, but we'd also have one on the right side. Let's go ahead and just put it over there. Here we have natural log absolute value of y plus c. Now if this equation is true, then e raised to the power of the left side must also equal e raised to the power of the right side. Remember this simplifies nicely. Now we'll just have the quantity v plus two, which we'll assume is positive. Now on the right side we have to be careful. This is equal to e raised to the power of natural log absolute value of y times e raised to the power of c. Well this is equal to y, and e to the c is just another constant. So this would be y times k if we let k equal e to the c. So the right side we can write this as just k times y. Remember we're trying to solve this in terms of x and y, so we can't leave this in terms of v. We originally used a substitution x equals y times v, and therefore v is equal to x divided by y. So we have x divided by y plus two equals k times y. To finish, we'll go ahead and clear this fraction here by multiplying both sides by y. So we'll leave our solution as x plus two y equals a constant times y squared. We'll go ahead and finish by looking at this graphically. The red slope field seen below can be generated from the original differential equation and then from the general solution, x plus two y equals a constant c times y squared. I believe I used k on the previous slide. We can select values for c and then graph solutions from the family of solutions. So on the graph below, I use c equals negative two, negative one, zero, one, and two, just to show a few of the possible solutions. Again, this should be c equals these constants. Okay, we'll take a look at one more example in part three. I hope you found this helpful.